The Liberal victory at last year's Tasmanian election has the government hopeful it can gain ground on the Apple Isle at this year's federal poll. Andrea Crothers has the latest in our Battleground Breakdown series from Lions, where the Liberal Party is trying to avoid the candidate controversy that derailed its campaign against Labor's Brian Mitchell last time around. Tasmania's largest electorate of Lions is a sprawling seat, which covers almost half the state. It's a regional seat of small communities with their own localised issues. But right now, for many, COVID is front of mind. I think a lot of people are, are very stressed and anxious. It's a common feeling on the Apple Isle since it reopened, as the state, which was the very first to shut off the rest of the country, allowed in both visitors and the virus. People are forming stronger opinions um, over the last couple of months with the way that things have been handled nationally. Brian Mitchell has been the local member for Lyons since 2016. As a Labor MP, he's only ever known life in opposition. I've had five, nearly six years now in opposition. And I'm, of course, hoping to be part of an Albanese Labor government after the next election. And is hoping that his satisfaction with the federal government's pandemic performance will help Labor get there. This government's use by date is well over. There are fish rotting from their head. In Campbelltown, in the centre of Lyons, COVID concerns dominate discussions. It's easy to say they could have done better. I think the federal government have got a lot to answer for. Whether or not um, the Prime Minister personally has got you know, answers, I don't know. But not everyone is convinced the, the alternative is the answer they're looking for either. Do you think Anthony Albanese would make a good Prime Minister? <laughs> I'm in two minds about him. I think we may need somebody a bit more forceful in their approach. You want a bit more grunt? Uh, maybe, yes. Yeah. Do you sense that there's a mood to keep Lyons as a Labor electorate? I think very much so. To win a majority, Labor needs to pick up seven seats. But if they lose ground in electorates like Lyons, their task becomes all the more difficult particularly when the coalition considers themselves credible contenders. Scott Morrison was hopeful of stealing lines at the last election, alongside Bass and Braddon in the state's north, before their candidate was eventually dumped for anti-Islam social media posts. What are your views on Muslims? Excuse me, guys. This time, the coalition is putting its faith in Susie Bauer to wrestle the marginal seat back into Liberal hands. I'm a fifth generation Lions person, so um, my, I've got you know deep family roots in Lions um, that go quite a way back. Um, I'm quite committed to this community. Most recently a local councillor, she spent two decades working in local government and higher education. I've worked in community all my life, but I've also worked in economic development. And I think being able to bring both of those things together is key uh, for Lions around the prosperity, around getting jobs for local people. The electorate's makeup has rapidly changed in recent years. Lyons was previously known as a northern seat. That's not the case these days. Its south is home to some of the fastest growing areas in Tasmania, partly driven by soaring house prices in Hobart, pushing people out of the left leaning capital in search of a much more affordable spot to settle down. We've got a yellow young families now, you know, the first home buyers and, and people like that. Towns like Sorrell represent a large pool of aspirational voters, voters typically linked to Labor's base, but who Scott Morrison has worked hard to cosy up to. Issues, it was infrastructure was the main one. Making sure small businesses keep surviving. I will support again a Liberal and, well, I hope they will win. I don't like Scott Morrison. <laughs> Why not? I just don't like his policies. I don't like what he's done with COVID. Um, how do I say? He makes mistakes, then gets other people to fix it up and then says, oh, he's done a good job. The margin tight. Both sides will be pulling out all stops. Andrea Crothers, Sky News in Lyons. Let's get some analysis of where the political situation is at. David Gazzard, DPG Advisory Director and former Liberal Advisor, and Ben Oquist, Executive Director of the Australia Institute, former Greens Advisor. David, first to you, let's start with Lyons and Tasmania more broadly. I'll 
I would say my, my uh, assessment at the moment is that it's probably one of the stronger places for the government right now. Yes, I think the, uh, the government feels reasonably confident um, in campaigning uh, and succeeding in lines. Um, what struck me in, in, in watching that package that had been put together was how, and, and we've seen it in the, the course of the, the new year, and the way that, that people are starting to engage more around the, uh, the handling of COVID, which, of course, has been problematic for all governments around the world, including Australia's, and, and, and no government has, has done everything perfectly, but the Australian government has certainly come out and, and probably succeeded in places like vax rates and, 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 and the, the rate of death and so on, even though there's a high level of frustration um, with the way things are gone after two years, and you can understand that. I, I got caught in that. You know, Christmas was changed for, for us this year, and uh, I'm talking to you from home because I, I'm, I'm a close contact, so I can't go to work today. So we, we're, we're all frustrated with that. We're all, we're all sick of it. But we're starting to see things move now into more uh, than, a, than just a referendum on, on the handling of COVID. But a choice between the parties and you know it's one thing to 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 be frustrated with the government and you'd probably be frustrated with the governments right around the world depending on where you live but you've got to make your mind up on would labor have been able to handle this pandemic better than the government and i think that's a, a very live question and then i'd add on top of that the other things that come with a government that you know has to do its day job and and and, and help manage the economy help manage security. So you, you sort of feel for this government in that it's almost been, you know, or there's almost been a requirement that there be two governments, one that's handled a, a major global crisis and the other that just gets on and does its day job. So I think people are going to be confronting that in lines and, and looking to, to, to choose between the parties and the leaders. Ben Oquist, that's a fair assessment, I think, from, from David. The, the question is, though... And this is something we've seen, that David's seen, you've seen and I've seen over, over many years. Sometimes the electorate switched off. Uh, they've, they've made a judgment. They don't, they're not listening anymore. Um, that's the risk for Scott Morrison at the moment. It is. Uh, I mean, obviously, the election's a long way to go, but on the current polls, um, the government's toast, isn't it, at 56, uh, 44, according to news poll. We've got similar polling. We, we polled Lyons in um, December uh, and had Labor ahead 52 Point eight, um, but they'd want to be ahead. That's a, a, a Labor-held seat. They need to hold that. They, they need to. They need to win Bass or Braddon. Um, I think Tasmania is more interesting and important than people give credit for. Lots of tension on Queensland, but um, they're three must-win seats for Labor. You'd, you'd think holding Lions and winning Bass and Braddon if they're going to win the necessary seven or eight seats to get majority government. I, 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 it is interesting, though, this incumbency issue. Um, clearly, Scott Morrison was, you know, literal about it yesterday, saying this is not a referendum on me, it's a choice between me and Albanese. And that, there's been that big shift, hasn't there? You know, early on the pandemic, we talked a lot about how incumbency was a positive for uh, a government, by and large, Donald Trump notwithstanding, and that uh, governments were rewarded because the electorate really had to back their government in a crisis. You're not seeing that anymore. Mm -hmm. And there's been that uh, big shift. Uh, Scott Morrison wants us to make this election about Anthony Albanese. Anthony Albanese wants to make this election yeah. about Scott Morrison. And whoever, in a sense, wins that debate will probably win the election. But uh, Scott Morrison is starting from a, a long way behind at this stage. David, if you look back to your former boss, John Howard, and, and that sort of period four terms um, over a decade compared to now, the coalition seeking a fourth term. Prime Minister's been in office over three years. He's overtaken all of the more recent PMs like uh, uh, Turnbull, Abbott, Rudd, Gillard. So he's the longest serving of this, uh, this phase. But mm. three years today is the equivalent of a lot longer in the days of Mr Howard because the new cycle and the... You know the visibility is greater. Would you do you agree with that? Is it a, is it a trickier proposition to go long and have longevity today? The the uh, the cycle I think tends to be uh, more abrupt. Issues are, are are truncated and collapsed together, and the swings are greater. I, I think there's no doubt 
that it's it's more difficult to govern these days in in, in a world of social media. Um, the, the news cycle is much shorter and, and the intrusion into politicians' lives and the expectations are much higher. The, the one thing I would say after working in and around politics for 30 years and working for John Howard through some election campaigns was that in, in, in nearly every campaign that I've worked, starting with John Howard, um, the coalition has started from well behind. And it was certainly uh, Howard's view that if you started at, at 52, 48, you could make that up over the course of a five-week campaign. I, I, I do think this campaign is going to be unique because it, it is an uncertain world. Um, there's no one that could to, could possibly uh, take exception to that. We, we, we've dealt with a, a global pandemic that has benefited the incumbent and... It, I think Labor have deliberately tried to to focus on Scott Morrison's management of the the pandemic, so they can scab lift on on various things that have gone wrong. But of course, that 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 doesn't mean you can manage those issues any better than the current government could. And I, I'm sure the government will start comparing how it's done with the rest of the world, and people will start going, well, perhaps we haven't had it so bad here, even though it's been a very difficult and frustrating time for us. And, and the problem, yeah. I think, that Labor might confront is that um, in taking a small target and just seeking to focus on scab lifting on problems, Labor won't have built its own credentials and won't have, have made the case about why voters should change. So there's, there's, a, there's a danger in just hammering away on, on all the negatives and, and, and not offering an, a, a suitable alternative on your own. So uh, Anthony Albanese will have to find that out. Yeah, yeah. Indeed. Now, what, that's definitely a risk, but, but uh, Ben, I, I guess the other challenge for Mr Morrison at this time is is almost a, a flip of of the 2019 experience where Bill Shorten was, was uh, pulled in all sorts of directions and really found it a difficult proposition with, um, you know, from the left and, and the right. To me, this time, with senators... Uh, anti-vax mandate senators pull, pulling in one direction, small L liberals in another and the teal independents uh, and the New, New South Wales government as well, for example. The PM just has a lot of awkward things he's trying to manage as well as a re-election campaign. Yeah, part of it comes with being a, a nine-year-old government and some of these things build up over time and often the divisions build up over time. I mean, we've got the ridiculous situation with the Liberals in New South Wales at the moment when, you know, all these seats haven't even been pre-selected. You know, like uh, Hughes and Debell and Bennelong and Parramatta and Warringah, key seats. And I, I think New South Wales is the key state in this election. Both sides are seeking to win seats off each other. And yet the Liberals are so divided they can't get those seats um, pre-selected. You know, we're, we're weeks from an election campaign. And then there's Matt Keane, um, who didn't miss this week. I thought his assault on the Prime Minister was probably the most important thing that happened this week because it wasn't just on the Prime Minister and the lack of support from the government for New South Wales right now. It was kind of an assault on what the government's economic agenda or promises might be uh, coming up. Um, Scott Morrison, after these years in power, is very well known. Uh, David Gazard is right. Um, Anthony Albanese is less well known. And the risk is that he's not well known enough. Yeah. But... I think his problem is not well known enough. Scott Morrison is, is he's too well known, and th there are solutions for Anthony Albanese on that. He is going to need to put uh, more flesh on the bone, sure. uh, more policies, not overlearn the mistakes from the 2019 election campaign where um, Bill Shorten seemed to have too big a agenda. He needs to have some, but he's got space to do it now. Ben, David, great to chat. We'll see you next week.